There is a tremendous need for low-cost or free legal services here in New York City. I went to law school knowing that I wanted to be a public interest lawyer. This was all I had ever wanted to do, was to do direct legal services for women and families in some capacity. And I didn't know exactly what that was going to look like. The number of law students who want to do public interest work is on the rise. We work with law schools to make sure that they have programs that instill values and affirm values that many of these students come to law school with, making sure that they have an opportunity to give back to the communities. We have a lot of students who are attracted to Georgetown specifically because of our ethic of service. The postgraduate market for public interest careers is very competitive, just simply because there's a lack of resources out there to, to fund those kind of positions. So fellowship programs like Equal Justice Works are vital to students being able to get their foot in the door. I knew about Equal Justice Works throughout my years at Georgetown, and it was sort of in my mind, I knew that this was an option. This was something you could do when you graduated law school to get the job of your dreams. So I approached the New York Legal Assistance Group uh, about doing, partnering with me to do an Equal Justice Works proposal. The New York Legal Assistance Group is a nonprofit law office that serves um, low-income New Yorkers um, in all five boroughs in a variety of legal areas. Legal Health had started to think about maybe serving pregnant women and new moms, but really didn't have the resources at the time. And then Shana came and she had this background in maternal health issues, and we thought, wow, why don't we put her interests, her background, and what we need together and see if we can get a fellowship out of this. We see these incredible candidates every year, and we wish we could fund many more of them because the ones that get away are just spectacular. But every year when we spot those fantastic young lawyers who want to do good work in the world, we connect those individuals and host organizations and their projects with sponsors. Pfizer has had a long tradition of supporting Equal Justice Works. Shana's energy and her enthusiasm uh, really came through, and the work that she's doing supporting women in need, bringing together legal and uh, medical interests is very important to us. Women are often the portals through which families get access to health care. I've established this clinic at Maimonides Medical Center in their high-risk prenatal clinic. It's a legal clinic in the medical clinic. Many of my clients have new babies. They have other kids. They have a lot going on in their lives. And so to just say, you know, oh, you have a 10.30 appointment with Dr. Minkoff? Well, come down and see me at 11.30 once you're done. It's amazing how much that changes the access to my services. <laughs> the ability to actually do good things for people is not related to what happens in the hospital, but what happens in their life. You need to have partnerships with people who can make the patient's life work. I prescribe the drugs, but the patient can't take them if the pharmacy won't give them to her. The pharmacy won't give them to her if she doesn't have insurance. She can't get insurance if she has legal problems in getting Medicaid. So while I could theoretically prevent her from getting sick, without Shane it would all be in theory. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a social worker, that's not my area of expertise, but together we can serve families with chronic health issues much better than any of us can on our own. We are reaching people when they are the most vulnerable. New York Legal Assistance Group, how may I help you? They have health concerns, some are very ill, and at the same time they have legal problems that often impact their health care. Hi, um, I was in a one bedroom, you know, not very good conditions. The building was so dirty, we had mice, roaches. I would fumigate like every two, three months because my son is an asthmatic, so roach hairs and mice hairs and stuff like that, it would trigger his asthma. I was accepted for Section 8, so I was approved for a two-bedroom apartment. Housing is a huge deal. Um, you know, it's New York City, it's scarce, and many clients wait on the Section 8 lists for, you know, 10 years. Tanya had waited on them for five. I was pregnant with my daughter, so I had explained to them, okay, there's a new person coming into the, the budget. Am I gonna get an upgrade to a three-bedroom? What's gonna happen? They told her, you're gonna go back on the waiting list. Shayna, she worked with me like we was a team, the dynamic duo. <laughs> we ended up filing an appeal, and it resulted in a settlement that was 
restored Tanya's Section 8 voucher. For Tanya, it meant the difference between living in a house that was jeopardizing the health of her son, and now she has a house with a good school, a house where she feels safe. It was a really great experience as a new attorney, I have to say. My first year, I you know, won this case for, for my client in a really powerful and rewarding way. The reason that we all do this work is the impact in communities. When you see the difference, the before and after picture, after most of these fellowships, you can't help but be inspired, and you want to fund more of them. We at Pfizer have supported 18 fellows uh, over the years at Equal Justice Works, and we do so because we really believe in the mission of Equal Justice Works. Our claim to fame is that we bring together law schools, law students, post organizations, sponsors, pulling all those pieces together to create incredible opportunities for young lawyers to do powerful projects that really impact communities. Serving the needs of vulnerable families has been my passion and what I find most rewarding and most exciting, and I hope to be able to do this for the rest of my life.